Uh, so we're starting a new model, right? Because we finished at the desk. Uh, but we're still in the same project. Uh, so in this case, I want to uh, quickly show you what the clock radio should look like. Um, so basically, I'm going to um, ah, go over to um, Canvas, of course. And you'll see that the clock radio is already actually in the uh, Canvas. If you go to File section, right? Um, so uh, just like modules is where all your videos will be, and you just go to the week we're in. Um, of course, you can turn your assignments in there, but uh, the file section is where you have your um, uh, some reference stuff, right? Uh, and some of these things we'll talk about more as we go along later on. Um, but <clears throat> um, the desk reference was there. Um, I think I put the bed reference as well. And of course, there's the clock radio reference. Now, in this case, uh, you guys don't really get any creative freedom at all for the clock radio. I really want you all to make this same clock radio. Uh, because I really want you guys to specifically demonstrate some of these ideas and core concepts, right? Uh, it, if you're making a super simple block clock radio, you're not really demonstrating how to use extrude and bridge border edge to make a slightly more complicated edge loop structure. So in this case, you guys really have to use this clock radio, right? Um, th in this case, you can't really have any choice. Um, so this is the clock radio you want. Um, of course, you can just click on it. You can kind of see that it looks like this. And what we can do, of course, is we can download it. Um, in this case, it's just kind of putting it in the download section for me, but I'll move it here in a second. Uh, so let me just click on the out. All right, and I'm minimize this because remember, I've already got project uh, three created. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna quickly go to um, my downloads. And that's right there, we'll just uh, copy it, right? Uh, and then we'll put it into project three, which I think should be that one right there. Yeah, project three. Uh, and then of course we go to source images and you can already see the desks there and we just paste it in there, right? That's the whole idea of projects is that you have a bunch of folders that you can put all your stuff in. Uh, and when you set projects, everything knows, uh, the, the MySeam knows where to find all these things and load them in properly. So that's why we create projects and set projects. It's just a good way to organize things, to have all of your, uh, any of your assets for this project all in one area. Uh, so with that, uh, so just remember that. We'll kind of um, pop my back up here, <clears throat> and then of course uh, we'll go file. Uh, we're not creating a project here because we're still in project three. Um, next week we'll create a new project for project four, uh, but we do want a set project, right? File set project, and this will bring up, of course, our ability to go find our projects. And there's project three. Uh, so remember, we don't open the folder; we just select the folder and we hit set, and now that uh, folder is set up for us. Now in this case, I need to start a new scene though, right? So we're working on project three, but we do want to start a new scene. In fact, we've kind of already got one started. Uh, so in this case, what I need to do is I need to load in my reference image. So remember we go to create <clears throat> free image plane, right? Create free image plane. And that'll load in, of course, this green um, kind of box with the X through it. Uh, we go to attribute editor right here, right? Remember these are all kind of on the side here. Channel box layer editor will show your History, which in this case there's not much. You can you know, uh, type in numeric transforms for the, for the object level. Modeling Toolkit, of course, has a lot of our main uh, modeling tools. And of course, Attribute Editor is the properties of the object, right? Uh, now, Control-A actually toggles between uh, Channel Box Layer Editor and Attribute Editor. So Control-A, Control-A toggles between those. Uh, but you can always just click on the tab too. Uh, remember, there are also these buttons up here, right? Modeling Toolkit, Attribute Editor, channel box layer editor. So you can kind of click on those to get these things as well. When we're an attribute editor, it usually will take you default to the image plane shape one, right? Uh, if for whatever reason it does play, take you to image plane uh, one, remember there are these little tabs at the top when you're in the attribute editor that can give you um, different properties of the object, right? And we want this one because we can see kind of the color gain, color offsets, um, display mode, so we can pick different kind of color display types. Um, you'll even see there's some options down here for um, playing around with some other properties of the image if you need to, um, or at least the uh, image plane, right? But in this case, we just want to load an image in, right? So image name, there's a little folder. So we click on that. And then, of course, we can find the clock radio. And you notice how, because we start already set project three, it goes right to source images. And it'll always look to source images for these files. So that's why if you have everything in your project, and you move your project around to different computers, if you set your project, uh, the Maya scene that you load in will know where to find everything else, any pictures that are loaded in for textures or reference images. Um, so we'll hit open. There we go. And I'll switch back to modeling toolkit because, you know, 
we're okay there. Now remember, by default, your units are set to centimeters, which is not wrong per se. Uh, it's just that you'd have to, if you're gonna make this the proper size, the proper scale, you'd have a lot of grid units, right? Um, which you might want, right? Uh, remember that's, uh, you would just kind of go to display, grid, options box, and you could really just turn your units up by a lot, right? So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, just like if you ever need to see your poly count stuff, that's also in display. Heads up display, you can check um, poly count up, right? So grid stuff's here, heads up display for poly counts right there. Um, so yeah, uh, in this case, we're gonna go Windows, right? Settings, preference, preferences. If you ever need to set up your hotkeys, right? Windows settings, preferences, hotkey editor, you can actually go here and, and give it a second. That's taking forever to bring up the hotkey editor. Um, you can actually go in here and you can actually pick from different categories, right? So we can go to editors and we can select an editor, um, like outliner if we wanted to, or we could go to menu items, right? Uh, and in menu items, you can go to like things to edit mesh. You can see there's bevel, bridge. You can already see there's quick keys form, but you say you can click on it and then you can assign your own quick key and then save. Uh, and of course, you can kind of, uh, you know, restore defaults, um, import your own hotkey editors if you want to. Um, it'll usually tell you if there's something already applied to it. So uh, remember, you have in your Windows settings preferences the ability, of course, to turn preferences on, but adjust your own shortcut keys if you want to. Uh, technically, you can make your own marking menus, right? Um, so like when we hold that right mouse button, you know, that kind of brings up those marking menus. So you can make your own of those if you want to. Um, let's see what else. Uh, workspace is also, of course, here as well. Um, you can go to color settings and you can adjust the colors for active objects, inactive objects, uh, 3D view general options. Um, so uh, keep in mind that you can actually go in here and change color if you want to for stuff. Like we go to general active and you can pick the active objects, object colors there are also there. Uh, so keep in mind that you can go into colors and you can kind of play around stuff, components. Um, so just keep in mind that you have the ability to kind of go in and adjust those things if you want to. Um, I'm usually fine with the default stuff, but there are things in here that you can use to um, play with your settings, right? Uh, so we'll go to settings, preferences. Um, and of course, there's a lot of preferences in here. We've talked about some of them several times. Remember, your autosave stuff's right here in files, projects, you can enable it. Uh, but a fault that saves the autosaves in the autosave folder of the project that's currently set. Um, and, you know, undos are down here, right? Undos are right there. Um, things like that. But settings is what we wanted because we want to change our working units from centimeter to meter, right? Um, so we'll hit save. And that way we still are can build something to scale, but we're not having to worry about a, a ton of grid units, right? Um, so in this case, when you think about a clock radio, um, it's really going to be like about a foot, foot and a half uh, in size. So we really want this to be um, not super huge, but it should probably be roughly kind of about... Um, kind of a, a third to half of a grid unit. Uh, so we'll hit R for scale, right? R for scale. Remember, they're always right here too. And we can just left click drag on that center one. And we drag it up till it's about, kind of roughly about half of one of those grid units, right? Because well, this looks like it's decent size. We'll kind of, you know, go with foot, foot and half, right? Um, I'm gonna hit W for move, right? So I can grab on the blue arrow to move it back, right? I always move it the opposite direction of the arrow because that's gonna make sure to put it behind the uh, object that you're gonna make right here on the zero, right? Uh, just to highlight that, if you tap space bar, right? Um, and I kind of uh, zoom out here, you'll notice in the front view, we can see it properly. But if we move forward, you see how it's kind of in front of the grid, it would be in front of the object. So I always make sure to move it back off of there. Remember, we really like to build stuff on the zero of the world, right? It's a good habit to have. You don't always have to do that. There are times when it's not appropriate to build on the zero of the world. Uh, obviously, when you put stuff in a whole scene, you move them off zero of the world. But when you're building it, zero of the, uh, using zero for your world, the, the origin, right? The zero, zero, zero is always quite useful. Um, symmetry, like world symmetry, uh, tends to work better from there. Um, uh, things like your ability to snap to grid to get special for like what we did on our, our uh, spokes for our lamp work better there. So zero is always a good place to work from, right? Um, I'm gonna put my cursor back over perspective, tap space bar again. As remember, tapping space bar maximum, minimizes your view. And whatever view you're over with your cursor, that when you tap space bar again, it maximizes. Um, so remember, tapping space bar minimizes your view so you can see all four, your front side um, back uh, or, or top, front side top, and your perspective. But if you uh, put your cursor over a view and you tap space bar, it maximizes that viewport again. Uh, all right, 
So there we go. Uh, remember F for frame selection. So we can kind of frame that selection. You just zero it out there a little bit. And of course, Alt left, Alt middle, Alt right mouse button for uh, your camera navigation, right? Um, I know you're tempted to use scroll wheel for zoom, but it's jumpy, right? So Alt right mouse button. Um, just like your middle mouse button is actually your scroll wheel. If you hold Alt and press down on your scroll wheel, not scroll it, just press down like it's a button, it is your move, right? And I know most of you guys know that by now, but if you don't, great little reminders, that stuff. Remember, uh, W, E, R, right? W, E, R, or your uh, move rotate scale. Q is your regular selection tool. That's always a great way to kind of turn off whatever your active tool is also. All right. Um, so there we go, we've got our clock radio picture in there, uh, and that's pretty good. Now, remember, when we build stuff, we, if we have the picture at an angle, we don't try to model at the angle, right? That's where you're going to have to do a little bit of interpretation, um, really to particularly have your uh, default manipulators work better and your symmetry work well, um, you really want to build kind of lined up to the world and not the picture. Um, the picture is there just as a reference, right? Um, you, you still have to kind of interpret to a certain extent. All right. So um, now we've got that set up. We'll go file, uh, save scene as really quick. And in this case, I'll just click on the already existing scene because we've already got the naming convention for that, right? We'll just undo the desk part, right? Delete the desk part and just say clock. There we go. But remember, this is the naming convention you should be following or something really close to it, right? If you shorten uh, DA intro to 3D instead of 3D modeling, 240, that's not a big deal, right? Um, but definitely the summer, 20, your name, project, the description of this, the model we're making, right? Uh, all right, so I'll save scene now. So there we go. And now we've got our clock state, uh, scene saved. Now, believe it or not, we're not actually gonna do much new in terms of tools on this clock. Uh, we're really just gonna be using things like extrude, right? Which we've seen plenty already, and bridge, which we've seen some of also as well. But we are gonna be doing it on border edges, right? So this will give me a great opportunity to talk about um, border edge extrusion and bridge ex edge extrusion, um, as well as um, uh, you know uh, why you wouldn't do it on uh, normal edges, because that'll create that non-manifold geometry. So we're gonna talk about that a little more in this first video. And I'll make a second video, and then of course, there'll be more videos to finish it up um, on our next class session. Um, but the nice thing about this clock radio is you see how it's got a little bit more interesting edge loop form? Right, we've kind of got this like this little circle button structure in here. Um, we've got this kind of nice rounded shape. There's kind of this little bit of trim that's going through here. It's not nuts or too crazy complicated like a car would be, but it does give us the ability to do something a little bit more complicated and interesting with our edge loop flows, right? And believe it or not, even though you could use bi rails, remember we kind of did our little boat kind of exercise, the exercise one, our bi rail exercise. That is a legitimate way to build a car. I'm not a big fan of it. I think it takes a long time. It's complicated. Um, it, it's You don't get real-time feedback. It's just a lot harder and a lot slower than it needs to be to build a car great. Um, there are other ways to build a car well with the same edge loops, much faster, much easier, with a lot greater flexibility, and indeed, full real-time feedback. And that's what I'm about to show you, actually. So we're not building a car this semester. You're going to see future semesters and later upper division courses. but. I'm gonna teach you a method that works great at building cars and it's fast and easy. Uh, we're just doing it on a simple object like a clock radio. All right, so uh, not really much new in terms of tools, but um, in fact, I don't think we're really gonna do any new tools, but we're gonna see some tools we've already played with again and in a slightly different context to build something a little more complicated. So in this case, we really have to think about the main forms and shapes for this. And the biggest thing is we can see we've kind of got this interesting clock face that kind of comes around kind of into like a dome shape and this nice kind of circular button structure. And so that's what we really kind of need to start to build from. In fact, we'll really start with the clock face radio. And you kind of see it's somewhat rectangular rounded on the sides. So believe it or not, I'm gonna start with a cube for this. So I'm gonna to go to create polygon primitives cube, right? Create polygon primitives cube. Now it's a little tall, so we'll hit R for scale, right? We'll scale this bit down. There we go. It's still a bit big too, so I'll scale it in a bit. Um, so remember, R for scale, and then you're just grabbing the different handles. Remember that center one, which is light blue, is the uniform scale. It scales all three at the same time. Now remember, your middle mouse button will actually uh, use the last manipulator selected. So if I want to make this a little bigger, right? So I've kind of clicked on that one to make it yellow. It's the active one. When I hold middle mouse button, you'll see it only works on just that axis. So whereas, say, in like Blender, uh, middle mouse button just does view, move, view, rotate, uh, uniform scale, which is actually super cool. 
Um, here, it, it's doing something similar, but it's not identical because it's using the last selected one. So if your last selected manipulator handle was the, the uniform scale where it scales all three at the same time, it does that. Same thing with view rotate, same thing with view move. But it, it's technically based on the last manipulator handle you used um, instead of uh, the, the, the kind of uniform uh, version of it. Uh, all right. So that's looking roughly about the size we want it to be. Uh, maybe a little wider on the red axis. Maybe a little bit in the blue. There we go. Um, so just getting it a little bit better. There we go. Now in this case, I don't really need everything on this though, right? I really just want the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, hold down right mouse button, right? So you put your cursor over your object, hold down right mouse button, because that'll bring up your marking menu, right? You can create your own of these, but that's what this marking menu is. And we can go to face, right? Face selection mode. And we can just do our left click drag to create that box, right? If you just hold down your left mouse button and drag, it creates that, it uses the default pick marquee, right? Which is just a box select. Whatever that box touches uh, or is inside of the box will get selected. And of course we can hit delete on our keyboard to delete it. And there we go. Now, just to show you guys some other things as well, um, if you were to hold down W and left click, so W left click, you see how you actually get kind of a marking menu for your uh, move options, right? Uh, like symmetry is there. You can change between rural and your different kind of axes stuff. Um, if you hold down E left mouse button, you actually get that stuff as well um, for the rotate tool, R left mouse button. Uh, and then there's things like um, uh, O left mouse button, right? So if you hold down O with your left mouse button, you'll notice that you can get some things like um, uh, Polygon selects vertices, normal things. So uh, believe it or not, there are some quick keys for some stuff that kind of bring up some extra um, options for tools if you want to. Um, I'm more of a uh, mark menu for selections um, and maybe for like adjusting the move and rotate scale options, but usually I'll just use the default quick keys like control E for extrude. Um, but there are other um, mark menu options and you can look some of those up if you wanted to. Uh, but there are kind of a couple of cool ones, um, but generally um, kind of, Holding down O, left mouse button brings up some cool stuff. Um, uh, I, I know there's some other ones too, but um, those will kind of give you some ideas. W for left mouse button, right? Anyways, all right, uh, but those are optional, purely optional. Um, you don't really have to use those. It's a lot to remember to kind of get around stuff, um, but yeah. Okay, so uh, in this case, I'm gonna select this face, right? Because I'm not gonna do this to the object level. Right? We're already in face selection mode, right? Holding around some face. So I might as well select that face so the object stays kind of zeroed out. Um, and I'm gonna hit E for rotate, all right? And I'm just gonna grab that red handle, rotate it back a little bit because you can kind of see in the picture that that front face is actually at a bit of an angle, all right? So I'm gonna rotate it a little bit to get a bit of that angle, all right? There we go. Now in this case also, I do need it to be rounded and you see there's a lot of rounded curvature on this. So whereas, We've used a lot of low res for like our room, our desk, our um, end table, even a lot of our bed. Um, we did start to see and explore how we could use smooth preview on our, 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 our lamp, right? Um, so, and even our handle. So um, we're now definitely gonna spend a little more time with smooth preview, particularly on the clock radio. We'll definitely see it some on our, um, on our office chair, right? Um, so remember, smooth preview is a great shortcut, right? Um, you hear people say that you use, shouldn't use smooth preview because um, you want your low res to look, and that is true. Not the part about smooth preview, but you want your low resolution mesh to look good. That's one of the reasons why my biggest rule, the rule you should never break, is if you're gonna work in smooth preview, you better smooth your model at some point, right? That's really important. We're using this as a shortcut because the other, only other alternative is to add every edge open by hand and any shaping that's rounded or curved, you have to do a lot of that by hand. Um, smooth preview just kind of uh, creates a shortcut for that, right? Uh, one of the other, more of a guideline than a definitive rule is um, keep it simple, right? Kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Um, don't add a million edge loops, right? You're really using the smooth preview to block in the primary shapes and forms quickly and easily um, uh, without having to put quite as much work in, right? So remember, smooth preview we're really just using as a shortcut. We do want our, uh, to make a good, efficient, low, res uh, low resolution, uh, or good looking low resolution mesh. Uh, we're just using smooth preview to kind of make that a little bit faster and easier on stuff that's got a lot of curvature and softness. All right, uh, so just keep that in mind, right? Uh, and in this case, we do wanna work with symmetry. This is a symmetrical object. 
So I'm going to go to multi-cut, all right? Remember, Control shift x is the quick key for that, all right? It's just that that's also a quick key for the capture software I'm using. So you're seeing me use a lot of the button here, even though I usually turn the quick key on. Uh, remember, hold down Control because I allow you to put the edge loop in. Now, in this case, you'll notice my snap percentage uh, size is set to 50%, right? 50. So that means when I hold down Control and Shift, right? Control and Shift at the same time, it snaps, right? So remember, Control just allows you to put an edge loop in kind of wherever you want to. Control Shift will snap it to the middle uh, because it's set to 50%. So there we go. Now we've got an edge loop right down the middle. And that's important. That makes symmetry work a lot better. You always want to, if, for a symmetrical object, if you're going to work with symmetry modeling, you really want there to be an edge loop down the center so that not only can you um, uh, delete half of this later on if you need to mirror it over, but it just it's going to make the symmetry work a lot better, right? So you always want to have that edge loop down the center. Uh, in this case, I probably could also use an extra edge loop here, um, probably right about the center also, just to give us a little more rounded shape there. Um, all right. Uh, in this case, I can hit three, right? Because remember, three is your smooth preview. You're not seeing much yet because it's there's not much shape there um, for us. But um, as we start to move some shapes around, you'll start to see that better. Remember, one is low res, three is smooth preview. Um, I'm gonna go to symmetry, right? Remember the symmetry button's right here. And we're gonna go to world X, right? Cause I'm building this on the X axis this way, right? It's a world X. And now you see how it's actually going to want to put that in. In fact, really we kinda need to keep this shape a bit sharper here. Remember if you put edge loops in, closer to where the corner's at, it keeps the shape straighter there and then kind of makes the area that's gonna round smaller, right? So I'm gonna hold down control, because uh, my multi-cut's still on, right? So my multi-cut's still on, I'm gonna hold down control. I'm gonna put one out kind of pretty far out here. I don't need to hold down shift because this one I'm just kind of eyeballing. Boom, and now that puts in an extra edge loop there. Now I'm gonna turn multi-cut off because at this point we need to do a little bit of shaping, right? This needs to be a bit more rounded and you see how it actually kind of arches back a little bit, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down right mouse button, all right? Remember, hold down right mouse button over your object and you pick the marking uh, selection type you want, vertex, right? And in this case, I can grab this vertex and what I can do is I can start to move it down. And you see as I start to move it down and in, we start to get some of that roundness we're looking for, right? So I can move this one down and up. And you see how once we start to change that corner, it actually starts to give us that corner. Now, if I go to edge selection mode, right? Hold down right mouse button edge, if I double click on this edge loop, you see as I move that closer into the center, that becomes more rounded. If I move it further out, it becomes sharper. Remember, it's what uh, makes the rounding sharper or softer is really kind of the edge loop proximity to other edge loops where there's a corner, right? Uh, in this case, I also wanna grab these two edges and I wanna move those back a little bit to give us a little bit of that rounding shape. So you can kind of see why we put this edge loop in here and that edge loop in there so that we could get a decently kind of solid rounded shape that's not too rounded, right? I'm gonna hold down right mouse button, go to vertex, move this one out a little bit. There we go. Maybe back a little bit, because you can kind of see it's got a bit of that roundness. And this can start to give us a pretty decent kind of core rounded front face for that clock, right? So um, that gives us a good starting point. But the thing is, just smooth preview, right? One turns it off, three turns it on, right? You can always toggle it back and forth if you need to. One for low res, three for smooth preview. All right. So uh, at this point, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to start to build off kind of more of this paneling structure right here. Uh, we're also gonna kind of probably create this shape and start to connect it up as well um, for this video. Um, although we might actually save it the next video. Um, in this case though, you notice how there's kind of a bit of this like little small gray trim kind of around here that then gets a lot thicker there. Well, I want to build an edge loop structure for this, right? This already basically gets kind of this major edge loop form that we want there. So what I need to do is I need to grab border edges. So I'm going to hold down, uh, remember, put your cursor over your object, hold down right mouse button, edge, right? Just move, hold down right mouse button, move your cursor over the edges. Now, this right here, right, is a non-border edge, right? That edge is not on a border. If you were to extrude this, don't, by the way, look how weird that is, right? That's really flat, it pulls weird. If I was to go do a multi-cut here, you see how it doesn't work in that area, right? If I was to do bevels, it wouldn't work in that area. When you extrude a non-border edge, right? An edge that's got two faces connected. So this edge has two faces connected to it. That's creating non-manifold geometry, right? And we've talked about this before. Non-manifold geometry generally sucks. It's not good. 
you can already see right here it's doing really bizarre weird stuff so do not extrude regular edges right that's going to create a world of pain right the only thing you should ever extrude is faces and border edges right now these edges right here are border edges right because that's an edge that's only connected to one face so when we extrude it it's going to create a normal face structure it's not going to create three faces connected to a single edge that's what non-manifold geometry is right when there's three faces connected to a single edge two faces connected to a single edge is manifold geometry normal geometry which is great so border edges, right, where there's no more geometry, right, it's that the edge of the geometry, um, basically it's an edge with only one face. Those are great, and you can extrude those to make really cool stuff. Now in this case, this trim should go all the way around. So I'm going to double left click, right, because remember, double left click selects an edge loop, and then I'm going to extrude. Remember, your quick key for that is control E, and you'll notice this creates a new geometry. I'm going to hit R for scale to scale it out a little bit. You see how that kind of starts to create that little trim? We can move it back a little bit there, right? But that starts to create that bit of trim for us, right? We can always add some more edge loops in later on and do a little more detailing later on, but right now we're keep, trying to keep it simple, right? But that does create this kind of face loop right here, right? So if I go to hold, hold, down, mouse, hold down right mouse button face, right? If I select the face and then I shift double click on a face next to it, it selects the face loop, right? So now we've got that kind of bit of trim there. Now, at this point, what we need to do is I really feel like I could probably should add one more edge loop through here. So I'll just multi-cut, kind of put an edge loop in there. There we go. This gives us a little more to work with there, right? You can even probably move this forward a little bit just to give us a little more roundness there. Maybe go to edge mode, grab this edge a little bit and kind of free move it uh, or just move it along that axis. But remember that center of the move manipulator is free move, right? That moves based on the camera itself. So it'll move relative to the camera uh, view and we're actually using that and uh, view rotate a lot more on this but you'll now see that there is kind of a good basic structure for this now it's not quite exactly what we want though because you have these kind of flow into a shape so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually go to face mode right hold on right mouse button for face and i'm actually going to get rid of this face that's kind of one of the reasons why i added this extra edge loop here right i'm going to delete that face and now what that does is it kind of gives us this little opening here, which we'll eventually fill. But if I hold down right mouse button for vertex, I could select this vertex. And you see I could do kind of a, a view move, right? Select that vertex, view move. And we kind of pull these around a little bit just to kind of get them a little wider, kind of a little bit more at a, a kind of an angle here, right? Just kind of fit that. Let me bring this one back a little bit. There we go. But you see how you can kind of grab that center one and it moves based on the camera itself. So it'll, make, it'll move kind of like it's constraining to the, uh, the view plane here. And when you're dealing with highly organic stuff that's got a lot of curvature, it can be quite useful. So what we want to do is we want to kind of have these flow to meet in kind of a, 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 an area here. So uh, I'm going to hold down right mouse button again, right? So I've got my cursor of the object. I'm going to hold down right mouse button. I'm going to go to edge. And I'm going to grab that edge right there. And I'm going to extrude that, right? Because remember, that's a border edge. So we'll hit Control E for extrude, uh, W for regular move, because I want to do free move, right? And if I hit E for rotate, you'll notice that there's this kind of uh, handle outside right here, right? This will kind of rotate just along that axis. This will rotate just along that one. But you'll notice there's this kind of um, light blue on the outside. You see how it's kind of always lined up to the view? That is view rotate, right? That'll rotate based on the camera view. So when you're starting to build stuff like this or cars, you might actually find yourself uh, using the view features a lot more, right? There we go. I'm gonna grab this one, Control E for extrude, W for move, kind of free move this out. And you see how we're kind of getting this edge loop flow to kind of follow through there. Of course, if I wanna uniformly scale to kind of thin it out a little bit, I can, right? E for view rotate if I want a little bit. So I can kind of adjust that view we go move it a little bit on the view and you see we're kind of pulling those shapes out to kind of get that form and of course i can go back to vertex mode and i can do a little bit of view move with those vertices to get that to get that curvature a little bit better there right but you can start to see how this method is going to allow us to do a lot more uh, with this shape 
right? We can really kind of start to define a more complicated edge loop pattern. Now in this case, um, what we can probably do is grab both of these opposite edges, right? This edge and this edge. And what we could do is we could bridge those, right? There we go. And you'll notice that automatically, if there's only one edge kind of in between them, it'll automatically do this. If you were kind of to adjust your divisions to say like one, you see how it actually kind of keeps it separated there a little bit. But as long as your um, kind of divisions are zero and there's only kind of one edge in between those, the bridge will automatically weld those up, right? And you now, now you'll see that this just flows a little bit differently, right? If I go to add edges through here or here, you see how it kind of flows all the way through there, right? So this is the idea behind this method in a simpler way, a much simpler way than a car, but show you that if you get smart about how you use extrude border edge, you can kind of build flows that do interesting stuff. And you see how we used move and rotate to kind of bend or even just moving vertices to kind of bend these shapes. Now we have kind of these three edges, which can serve to create this further strip there. I'll just turn my scale tool on a little bit and kind of scale towards this zero there to flatten it out. And it probably should be a little bit rounded, so I'll bring that out maybe on the x-axis just a little bit. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to build the rest of this strip, right? Because that's a kind of defining feature to this form, and it is kind of its own little edge loop structure. So we're going to extrude W for move. Now, of course, we can just move it on the blue axis if we want to, move it out on the red a little bit. There we go. We'll extrude again. W for move, kind of bring it out here a little bit. Remember, you can always double left click on an edge if you need to make more adjustments, right? There we go. But you see how we're kind of starting to create this bit of strip there? And of course, we can extrude again. And if we want to, we can just hit W, right? And just do view move, right? Uh, you can always, always just use these constraints as well, right? Remember the squares um, only move along two axes. And I'll extrude again. W for move, kind of move this one back. And you see how I'm making sure to keep it simple, right? I don't have a million edge loops in here, right? I'm not extruding 20 times. I'm really only extruding about uh, four or five. And you see how that really keeps it so that it'll be easy to adjust shape and, um, uh, but get that rounded curvature. This is the real cool option and power of using Smooth Preview, right? Is that it's saving you a lot of work, right? So I'm going to extrude one more time, and we'll kind of uh, bring this one back over here. Uh, there we go. Probably move this back maybe a little bit more. Uh, and we should bridge to connect that up. So I'm going to uh, turn my symmetry off for the moment, right? Because that'll do weird stuff to the bridge. So turn your symmetry off. And then, of course, we've got border edges selected. Now, remember, these border edges, right? Um, bridge can work on border edges also. But remember, bridge always wants to work same number to same number. So in this case, I've got three edges to three edges. So we'll bridge. Now in this case, I want a division right down the center, right? So I'll just hit one in the divisions for the option for bridge. And then we can hit Q, right? Remember Q is your selection tool, but it turns off whatever tool you're in. And now we've got that properly connected up there. We can go back to symmetry and we could turn world X on. And then of course I can grab that edge loop and I can bring it out a little bit. You see how it can't come off the center. This edge loop, if I want, I could select it and bring it back out. And now we can just go back in here and make minor shape adjustments. Like this, I feel like it needs to be a bit more rounded in the back there. So you said we can just double click, double left click on edges to kind of bring these forms out, right? I remember shift double left click while I select um, multiple edge loops, right? Then double left click. And there you go. And you see the uses of being able to view move or even just constrain to these two axes versus um, always just doing one at a time. It makes the process um, honestly a bit faster, right? Remember, just double left click to select. And then sometimes you might even just move it along there. But you see how without a ton of edge loops, you can actually get a lot of that shape. It'll look fairly blocky in low res, although even in this case, you see how it still looks pretty good. But we want this to be a bit denser, have a little bit more roundness. Um, if you really needed to, remember, you could double left click on an edge. And remember, control delete, right? Edit mesh, delete edge vertex, control delete, and you could take an edge loop and its vertices out. And then you see how we could actually move this out to create that roundness. So in this case, I might've actually overdone my extrusions. But you see how you can still get a lot of great roundness um, 
without having to have a million edge loops built into it, right? So it's a little, little blockier now. So this is the real kind of power of Smooth Preview is that if you're smart, right, and you know you're eventually gonna smooth it, which we will, um, you should always do that, that is a rule. Um, but if you keep your model simple and you focus on just kind of trying to get the major forms, it's a great shortcut, right? Because you're still, when you smooth it, you're gonna have a pretty efficient model um, for a, a lot of pipelines. Maybe it's a little heavy for video games, but you can always take a few minutes to take some edge loops out, right? Uh, in fact, uh, exercise three is gonna be our LOD exercise. We're gonna actually go back in and quickly do a reduce and take a few edge loops out just to make it a little simpler. Um, but you see how this gives us a lot of nice rounded curvature already um, for this model. A nice thing is you toggle it, right? One is low res, three is smooth preview. But this was just extruding, and we used move, rotate, and scale. Um, and we just were getting to look at our move, rotate, and scale tool some more. Bridge, right? Bridge came into it a little bit. Um, and that will give us, I think, a great start and a great place to kind of finish up for this video.